After pointing the finger at U.S. governors for 24 hours, the U.S. president now pointing the finger once again at the World Health Organization, announcing that all U.S. funding will be suspended to the world body. As the organization's leading sponsor, the United States has a duty to insist on full accountability, one of the most dangerous and costly decisions from the WHO was its disastrous decision to oppose travel restrictions from China and other nations. The U.S. president also says he has the ultimate authority when it comes to deciding when the U.S. economy is reopened. Governors, including those at the epicenter of the outbreak, say they don't want this fight, but they will decide when, how and by how much their states will resume economic activities. That statement cannot stand. And it's not only violative of the Constitution, it's violative to the very concept of democracy. I mean, this was the first battle. Do we want a king or do we want a president? And we opted for a president. So that statement cannot stand, period. The U.S. president wants to reopen the U.S. economy quickly. He's talked about May 1st as a possible date, one that his leading COVID-19 health advisor says is unlikely. I think if we are assuming that two weeks from now, that all the curves are going to be down, that, I, I think that's, that's you know, a bit overly optimistic. The other major problem in getting Americans back to work is the lack of testing in the U.S. Tensions among the White House, the states and the private sector have slowed a national rollout of COVID-19 tests. In one bit of good news for the U.S. economy, all the major U.S. airlines have signed a deal that will keep most of their employees on the payroll in return for tens of billions of dollars in financial support. That will stop tens of thousands of more American workers being added to the unemployment lines, at least for now. Nathan King, CGTN at the White House.